This is Gail Morgan welcoming you to the Libertarian Counterpoint. Now, your host, James Just. Thank you for joining me today. With me is John Cameron in the middle today and Richard Fields down on the other end. All right, gentlemen, we're going to start out with with a simple question. Does science have a God complex? And the question I'm asking this is because there's a mission to bring back the woolly mammoth. And the claim that repopulating the woolly mammoth is going to prevent global warming by somehow making the permafrost stay frozen. I don't understand what the logic is behind that. But, hold, but hold if, on. I have an answer to that. Wait a second. Yeah. Well, of course, some tech billionaires got together with some crazy scientist. And, of course, so now they're going to try to regrow a woolly mammoth. But, the, you know, the question is, if we're accidentally, humans by their natural activities, accidentally changing the environment, what makes us think we should be deliberately altering the environment? I did, it, some of this stuff makes no sense to me. Well, I, so it's I, like, I think that woolly, uh, recreating a woolly mammoth in the lab, I think, is a, is a wonderful idea. I, I think using uh the the excuse of uh, i think we should have woolly mammoths i think we should have tyrannosaurus rex i think we should have pterodactyls i think we should have goldwater republicans i i'm just all the stuff out of the past that's either entertaining or useful i think we should bring back uh and if we can do it in a lab i mean we're we're we're, we're now suffering from you know, a panic caused by something. Well, you know, you know, they made a movie about that. Jur, 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 Jurassic Park, I think it was. Jurassic Park, yeah. Yeah, yeah. well, the, the thing it is, it worked out all that well in the end, but. Uh, well, no, but that, you know, that'll, that movie. that'll never happen again because, because you know, accidents never happen. Experiments always go right, especially gain of function experiments. Anyway, um, so what's hilarious about the, 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 the news story that one of the news stories that brought this out is that they're saying that, that woolly mammoths will, um, um, woolly mammoths will uh, uh, prevent global warming. And here's the reasoning that uh, in the past, the tundra was grasslands. And, and grasslands are, are better uh, uh, carbon sinks than forests because of the, the, dark, um, uh, the dark trunks on conifers. I guess they forget that there's also uh, needles and things that are, that are green, but it's, it's all a lie because uh, the reasoning is that, that all the forests are burning down because of global warming, which is also a lie. Um, they're burning down because of poor forestry management um, that nobody wants to take credit for. And, and, and grasslands hold carbon in their root structure. So even if the grass burns off, the carbon is still held under the root structure. But the simple solution to that is trees, trees hold way more, way, way, way more carbon than grassland. If you ever, if you ever, you know, want to do the math, figure out how much, how much, uh, you know, like a, a quarter acre of grass takes in water uh, versus a tree, uh, quarter acre of trees. And so, you know, the thinking only holds if um, um, all the forests burn down. And the other thing you're talking about is that, that these mammoths, by tramping down on the snow, will impact it. And that will, will also... Uh, make the permafrost not melt because it's melting all over the place. And by crashing through these forests, they'll knock down the little seedlings, the, the saplings of trees, and allow the grass to grow. So um, I don't know what they were smoking, but I'm sure it indeed came out of a lab, or at least when it was grown, it was modified in a lab. So if you take that reasoning that that trees by their dark nature don't reflect as much light back into the atmosphere to escape the earth, then why are you in favor of a couple million acres of black solar panels 
covering <laughs> the, the planet. We got John started on this whole global warming <laughs> climate thing. You know, I, was, I was poking fun at I was poking fun at that scientists, you know, having get well, this you know, big the interesting, the interesting thing about this is 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 the marketing on it. They're, they're calling it a woolly mammoth, but what they're really talking about is doing some gen genetic modification on an Asian tropical Asian elephant to you know make it more adaptive to cold weather. It's not going to be a woolly mammoth. It's going to be an Asian element ele elephant that uh, can you know with uh, an extra layer of blubber or something. I, I'm not sure exactly what they're, you know, how they think this is going to work. It's going to be a I, I'm going to guess, I'm going to guess that it's not going to work very well. Remember, remember Dolly the sheep? Yeah. Dolly the sheep didn't, didn't do so well. No, well, it, hmm? it's the hubris of science that, that I kind of, we're experiencing on a day-to-day -day basis here nowadays, right? That they think, well, just because we can do something, means we should do something, means it's always good. And then if you complain about it, well, sit down and shut up. It's like, well, well, I don't have any problem with, you know, with with them doing their little experiment. I'm just making a prediction that it's not going to work out uh, in the way that they expect it to, certainly not when it comes to global warming. You know, I, that's that's just after the fact justification. Hmm. Yeah, that's, yeah that's, that's exactly what that is. That's just justification, trying to sell it to somebody. I'm sorry, John. No, it's it's it's, it's re the the reasoning that the the what's the word I'm looking for Kafka esque that's the wrong word just the bizarre logic that people use and they skip right over you know the most important part of whatever they're arguing about and go right to global warming or you know when we're Anyway, we're going to talk about some other stuff. Yeah, they, I'm, they, I'm, they want to I'm play around that. with science, and they want to play around with genetic engineering, and they, and, they, and they're experimenting on this thing, and that's all great. That's all fine, but just say that. Mm -hmm. Don't kind of push into this global warming nonsense. But talk about hubris and the God complex. You know, the government don't show up. The government down in Vallejo, pothole vigilantes have been issued a stop work order from the city because well, you can't show the city up. You know, you can't have a bunch of three four guys out there in a crew filling potholes when the city can't do it so so the city is now making these guys trying to get these guys to stop of course they're not going to stop they've already said they're not going to stop they're going to go around filling potholes but talk about priorities or a lack thereof you're, you're going to say well, what's interesting order. to me is is the city's excuse they're worried that the tar which is i'm sure highly viscous and will, you know will run off wherever is going to cause some sort of an environmental problem. Well, you know, they're not using uh, ingredients that meet up to the uh, high standards of City of Vallejo specs for filling potholes. Well, come on, you know, yeah, this is just government bureaucrats exercising their authority because they can mm -hmm. and uh, ignoring the needs and the wishes of the populace who don't want to wreck their cars every time they drive down the street. If they're so worried about the potholes, then fill them. If not, or if you're so worried about it, give them the materials. Say, hey, here's some materials. Go out and fill the potholes. No, no, no. You couldn't do that because if these people don't don't fill these potholes properly according to spec, then then during rains, this this poorly uh, poorly machined asphalt, poorly uh, put in asphalt. Will will lift up from the surface of the road, and it might drop. It might drop into a storm drain, create flooding, and the city will be liable for it. You so you can't yeah. you can't have them be liable for things. But why, so except for why don't we, we are the no no it are. really comes down to we have some union jobs in the city maintenance department that we have to protect at all costs. That's what yeah. I, 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 I ultimately well, I'm sarcastic. I I agree with all of you guys. It's it's crazy mm -hmm. that. Um, the, the 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 governments at all levels completely refuse to do their job yet uh, uh, insist upon a mission which has never been given them which is social engineering and so you have uh, you have uh, uh, cities that are unsafe you have rampant crime you have potholes in the street that destroy cars uh, and cause accidents. I don't know if you're anybody on a motorcycle, you ever hit a, a bad pothole unless you're lined up for it perfectly, you're going to go down. And and so 
it's ridiculous that that if uh, if the populace wants to step in and do the job that all these government agencies and billions of feels like billions of government employees refuse to do and are stopped, it's just it's just another straw on that poor crushed camel's back. That camel's only about that that high now because it's been crushed, just crushed. Yeah. Well, and we'll kind of move on and talk about jobs. A Quinnipiac poll that shows Biden's approval rating is down to 33 percent. Now, a lot of people want to make simple reasons why, but the reality is this is highly complex reasons why. You've got the progressive side of the of the Democrat Party. He's all mad that he's not hasn't shoved managed to shove their agenda through. Then you've got the rest of us who are all kind of mad that you know jobs are the job market is sorry in upheaval. The, the the mandates, some people are mad at mandates, some people are mad that you don't have more mandates. You, <laughs> you've got this crazy old mess, and then you've got this inflation uh, monster kind of hovering above all of this thing. Mm -hmm. And it's no surprise to me that this guy who can't communicate properly and has zero leadership skills now, if he ever did, is has no leadership. Mm -hmm. You know, No one wants to follow him. Well, yeah, I think, I think his uh, approval ratings are lower than uh, Nixon's were at Watergate, uh, you know, or, uh, approaching an all time low for all presidents, mm -hmm. uh, including Jimmy Carter, Richard Nixon and, uh, uh, and and Donald Trump at his worst. But the thing is, the inflation uh, bugaboo, I think, is probably what's coming back to bite him the most. Everybody, when they go to the grocery store or go to the gas pump or go to the hardware store or try to buy a house, they are staring at the inflation monster directly in the face or the monster staring them in the face. And there's not a darn thing any of us can do about it. Very few people realize the actual cause of inflation, but you gotta, you gotta, you gotta kind of feel sorry for old, you know, poor slow Joe, because inflation was started under the Trump administration and before that by the Bush administration and the Obama administration, when the government pumped up the money, the Fed, a government, quasi government agency pumped up the money supply with abandon, uh, supposedly to fight the pandemic or to uh, remedy the, uh, the, the problems caused by the government lockdown response to the pandemic. Well, nobody, you know, we're not going to let business produce anything. Uh, so that's going to reduce incomes, reduce money in the economy. So we'll just create money and throw that into the economy. Well, you've got more money, less supply, prices go up. It's Econ, Econ 101, or at least before the Keynesians and the, uh, the, uh, the, 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 uh, the Econ 101, story. Richard, that's Econ 1. It's not mm -hmm. even Econ Whatever. 101. Was thinking, yeah, <laughs> it's just, it's just absolutely insane. Number one. I mean, I've, I've been reading in M MSNBC, in, uh, in uh, the Washington Post, all of these uh, uh, so-called news organizations are putting out analysis pieces saying, what's the cause of inflation? Is it because grocery stores are greedy and they're raising their prices so that they have a 1% margin instead of a 0.9% margin? Is it uh, the uh, the uh, the uh, food processors because they've got a monopoly? It's none of those things. I mean, they may be minor contributing factors, but the cause of inflation is and always has been money supply growth without the corresponding supply in the amount of goods and services provided. It's just so simple. Unfortunately, I mean, I, fortunately for me, I lived through the 70s when we saw this, the same phenomena. But most people uh, are younger than I am and don't remember the rampant inflation that was killed, uh, caused by, or cured by Paul Volcker. They don't even know who Paul Volcker is. Uh, and unless we get a Paul Volcker and his name is not uh, is not Jerome Powell, we're going to have inflation and it's going to continue for a while. Uh, so, you know, I. OK, that's my rant on inflation. Uh, going back to poor Joe, Joe Biden. Well, he's kowtowing to the left entirely, to the progressive left with all of his uh, his uh, his uh, build it back better programs. Uh, it's the Green New Deal. It's. Uh, subsidies to everybody in under the world it's uh, changing the voting laws so the uh, the democrats have uh, free reign to uh, uh count the votes i think is, a, is the polite way of putting it however they want to count the votes it's not as lennon said it's not it doesn't matter who who votes it matters who counts the votes 
Yeah, I, I, I'm going to add add some fuel to Richard's rant here. What, uh, but what's upsetting to me is not is is how um, effectively the the uh, the organs of state propaganda, the MSNBCs and the New York Times and and CNN and all the rest of them are very carefully not reporting on what is obvious to anyone who's ever read and uh, sat in an econ 101 class, because I don't think they ever want to call it one because that would make it, you know, too small. Um, you know, 101 is a college course. One is, I wish they teach, you know, basic, no, never mind, because I know what kind of economics they teach in grade school. It would be socialism. Um, but it, the, the basic problem is, again, the money supply. And the reason they're not talking about the basic problem is then the, the great uh, mass of people who keep their heads down and hope that the, the, the government doesn't pick on them might stick their heads up and say, heads up and say wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. You guys, you guys have caused this. You, the people in government have done this. It's not the fault of these people down in the grocery store, the people who are drilling for oil or the people who are making cars or selling us those nice computers that, you know, do now for a thousand dollars what you couldn't get for 15 years ago for 10 million. It's not those people. They're the good people. It's the government that's the bad people and the banksters. We can't have that. So they're not talking about it. It's a, uh, but it's and, and the other part of it is the cure to inflation is lowering the money supply, which means ending quantitative easing, which is a, a polite way of, of saying uh, for the Fed to say, OK, we'll print up trillions or billions of dollars worth of money and use it to buy distressed government and corporate bonds so that interest rates don't go up. Controlling interest rates at the source or in the in the overnight market for uh, on the short term, in the long term by buying bonds. Uh, if that happens, both the bond market and the stock market will take a tumble. Who owns most of the bonds and the stocks? It is the elites and their friends in government. They are bound and determined to keep their gravy train going just as long as they possibly can. Mm. Uh, most of them realize it won't go on forever and they'll uh, ultimately switch their uh, assets to uh, gold or Bitcoin or something that uh, can hold uh, hold us value. But for the time being, they want to make sure that the asset bubble, which is where inflation has gone or did go uh, up until the most recent, uh, up until the last year, most inflation ended up in assets. Now it's ended up in, in actual uh, consumer goods. The elites are worried and they should be worried, but they still want to keep that asset bubble going because otherwise they would lose money big time. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's a vicious circle. And the, the Fed is, even if they wanted to do the right thing, it would be very difficult for them to do so and maintain their independence, so-called. Well, and there's two other factors, I think, driving down Biden's numbers is you've got one, the, the narrative that shall not be named is falling apart. And there's so many people who have essentially spent the last two years chanting that narrative over and over again, and it's falling apart in front of them. You know, of course, someone who's championing that narrative is going to take a hit with that. And then the second one is, I don't understand what the progressive left can get they can't get you know the center of their own party to agree with them but yet somehow they think if we just get this stuff passed the rest of the country is going to somehow magically agree with them and you know <laughs> these people are kind of delusional and so you know if biden wasn't such a political hack i'd feel bad for him but you know you reap what you sow over the course of his career he's kind of you know created this mess for himself and i you know in a sense i feel bad because i think he's probably should not be in this position where he is. He's being used by the establishment. He's a figurehead being used by the establishment more than he's being president himself. Mm. And well, it's I'm kind of sad. I... I... Go ahead, James. Sorry. No, I just find it kind of sad. I really didn't have anything to go after that. It's just kind of sad. On on the, on the one hand, uh, you know, it's 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 we've been kind of conditioned to think about you know, popular presidents getting their agenda done. But as a libertarian, what I want is is an incompetent stooge as a president, uh, and not a stooge, but see somebody else's stooge, and a whole bunch of incompetence in all houses of Congress disagreeing with each other. Uh, and occasionally when they've come to some kind of conclusion to do something really, really wrong, an objective Supreme Court that will rein them in. And now we've got, we've got, 
quasi-objective Supreme Court, or at least they pay attention to the, to the uh, to, to parts of the Constitution. We have an incompetent as, as president, um, and we, we have seen how bad Congress is. So we might get to the point where, where inadvertently um, government creates a libertarian state by being completely incompetent in all places. The only problem with that is the deep state is still there and they're heinously efficient and effective at controlling and maintaining power and crushing any hint of resistance on the part of the American people. So that's the, the fourth part of government that I, I don't quite know how to deal with. If you guys got any ideas, just let me know. Anyway. Which well, ideas? But there is one That's idea, fine. and yeah. I, I think some people have t have used it. U-Haul has run out of trucks leaving California. <laughs> they're, they're out of trucks. People have decided that the way to deal with it is to just leave, just voting with their feet, so to speak. Now, I feel bad for some of these places mm -hmm. like Texas and Tennessee, you know, because you got a bunch of Californians going over there. And even the people in, who are in California are center in Texas and Tennessee are going to be far left. And so, you know, there's this, the rest of the world, they don't kind of know what they're getting into in a sense. But we're also losing a lot of our libertarian community. A lot of our libertarian people are, they're leaving. They're going to, to greener pastures or pastures that are less brown, I guess, is what we could say. And it's a sad thing because our communities are disintegrating. And that's just a sign, another sign of, you know, the incompetence of the leadership. What I was noticing Everything in California is broken except the tax collection. It shows you where their pattern, where their, their categories are. Our tax collecting budget it's booming through the roof, right? We've got record amounts of money. Everything else is broken. Potholes can't get filled. We have pothole vigilantes, but yet the government has lots of money, but nothing works. All right, and and you know the same thing. Record amounts of money being spent in our uh, government-run school district. Uh, school districts, and we have uh, some of the least educated students in the country. Um, and I'm, I'm still dialing in the joke. Richard didn't like it. Let me see if I could, I could, I could dial it in a little better. Um, you know, and, and one of the leading, the leading special interest group is uh, is the California Teachers Association, which uh, you know is responsible for a whole new meaning of the phrase "California grows the most vegetables in the country." It's still not working, but I'll get it there. I'll get that joke there. I promise I'm going to work on it and work on it. And one of these days, it will get a laugh. So, one of these days, yeah. well, you're getting a laugh, John. It's just not for the right reasons. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a groan, John, but that's okay. Yeah. Well, you know, the groan is just, you know, if people groan or laugh, at least they're listening. But the point is, is that our, we're, this, this state is self destructing. And if it wasn't for Silicon Valley propping it up, because that's where most of the tax revenue is coming from all these multimillionaires and billionaires in, in, um, in Silicon Valley, we'd be upside down. But now with, you know, the, the, the COVID stuff and all the rest of that, a lot of these Silicon Valley types are, are learning that they can, uh, you know, basically move to paradise and with good enough internet connection and a reasonably close airport, they don't have to deal with, uh, traffic jams in Silicon Valley, and they can, you know, sell their $1.2 million two-bedroom, two-bath house in, in Silicon Valley, or in the case of a lot of these people, their $10 million house in Silicon Valley, and go buy a country somewhere else. So, uh, you know, eventually, uh, you know, the Elon Musks and the Intels and all the rest of that are, are going to pull everybody else uh, with them. And then uh, it's going to be very interesting. It's going to be very interesting in the state of California when the major revenue stream does not exist. We'll, we'll probably, California will probably become more uh, welcoming to immigrants at that point because of the, just to replace the lost population, if nothing else. Yeah, but it, if they're not replacing the economic activity, if they're replacing high-end economic Oh, I, I tell you what, immigrants will replace the lost economic activity. The most, uh, the most uh, uh, entrepreneurial people in this country today are in fact immigrants. Take a look at who all of the, the movers and shakers or many of the movers and shakers in Silicon Valley are. They're immigrants. 
Yeah, yeah, but if they're being strangled by the same regulations that are pushing people out, how long will it last? Are yeah, they going to stay? Are they going to yeah. they're going to go? Are they going to go too? Well, they they to stay. Where where well, the opportunity is, but you know, I I I I don't know what to say long term about California. If it if it wasn't for Silicon Valley and and the glorious natural beauty that the ineffective government here has done its best to destroy and keep people out of, uh, you know, nobody would want to live here. I mean, it's just, it's a mess and it's going to keep getting worse. And I know we had, I don't know, we don't have much time, but I thought we were going to cover a couple other things. But no, we're going to, we'll, we're going to turn this into the last minute and a half or whatever to the John Cameron show. John, it says here, the world is getting cooler in 20, was cooler in 2021 than 2020. And they say that's not good news. Somehow I thought the world getting hot was bad news, but now it's getting cooler and it's not good news. I don't know anymore. I don't think these people, I think these people are just making stuff up as they go along, to be honest, at this point. Well, I, I, I don't know. The John Cameron show is going to be very short today. Uh, anybody who wants to read just a bizarre, I hate, I hate to give, should I even give a plug to them? They do some interesting tech articles, but there's an, there's one of these circuitous, whatever you call it, circular reasoning articles about um, um, the, the world not being uh, as hot and in uh, 2021 as it was in 2020 and why this is uh, not necessarily a good thing. And none of the reasoning is talking about, well, it's because the shutdown, you know, there was less aerosols released and aerosols reflect uh, heat back into the atmosphere. It was El Nino or La Nina or El Mujer or La Hermosa. I don't know what they call it. Um, and, and basically it was just, and then they kept quoting this radical left eco group uh, out of Berkeley called Berkeley Earth or something like that. And they're numbers. And, and everybody knows that the, the numbers that NASA quotes and all these other people quotes are fudged. You know, they're, they're, they selectively, uh, they, they even out statistics and remove weather stations that don't report what they want and all the rest of that. So it's just, it's just, it's going to be very interesting when it snows in Palm Beach. Uh, how they're going to explain, you know, that global warming caused that when we're heading into the Maunder minimum. So I don't, I don't know. It's just, well, you know, I, I think probably we are experiencing a little bit of global warming, but I say, who cares? Uh, it'll, yeah. it'll, it'll, it'll work to the benefit of people who live in Canada, Siberia, and Alaska. Uh, it won't be so happy a time for people who live in Brazil, but, you know, uh, I'm also in favor of open migration. Move to where the climate is nice. That's, that's my theory. Yeah. I'm all for wanting to live cleaner, you know, whether, I don't care, you know, whether that makes the environment warmer, cooler, the environment's going to do what it's going to do. And for whatever reasons, it, for other, because we're here or not, it's going to change. And I would want to live cleaner. And I think that should be our, our one of our main goals. Yeah, we are, out of, we are. I think we are out of just about out of time. I want to thank you, gentlemen, for being here. I want to thank Access Sacramento for giving us the opportunities. I want to thank our producer, Gail Morgan, for all the work he does behind the scenes. And I want to thank all of our viewers for and listeners for watching and listening. And please remember to love everybody. Thank you for watching The Libertarian Counterpoint. Listen each week in Sacramento on Comcast Channel 17 for Knuckleheads of Liberty on Monday at 5.30 p.m. and The Libertarian Counterpoint Show on Thursday at 8 p.m. Also on YouTube, Facebook, and podcasts everywhere.